My girl Moniece. Moniece, 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 Moniece. My girl Moniece showed up. Um, last week on Love and Hip Hop, and it continues this week. And I must say that I was so happy to see my girl, Moniece. Some people might get mad because I love me some Moniece, but Moniece is good TV, and I love me some motherfucking Moniece. That bitch, even when she wrong, I still love me some Moniece. However, she comes in, and um, she kind of wrecks shop on Jay and Rich, pretty much. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the way she did it, but... At the end of the day, she ain't do nothing but expose Rich and his trifling ass ways. Apparently, he's still been hitting on Monique, asking to see her monkey and all sorts of shit. And Jade feels attacked. And to be quite honest, if I was her, I'd feel the same motherfucking way. Like, she ain't necessarily mad at Monique for it. But she's more so mad at Rich because she just got attacked by Ashley. You know what I'm saying? Ashley pretty much gave her, like, the bitch I don't like you talk. You know, you too young for my daddy and all of this. So she already felt attacked by her. Now Monique pops in. And now Monique's dropping all this tea about the fact that Rich want to fuck her again. And all of that. So now she's crying. And Rich ain't doing nothing to, to defuse the fucking situation. So you can't really be mad at this chick for that. Like I do feel like she's a weak ass bitch to be quite honest. Because I ain't no way in hell I let somebody come in and, and wreck shop on me and my man. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, this is a young girl. She is like 24 years old. Hell, I'm older than this bitch. So what the fuck do you expect her to do when she probably ain't even used to no crap like this anyway? So, she starts crying and shit, and um, Monique was like, well, you did say that. You know, you said that you would never be with nobody else like me. You know you know what I'm saying? Like, it'll never be another woman that will compare to me. You know, that's what you said. And Rich was like, Monique, shut the fuck up. And Monique was like, but you did say it. And Rich, just own up to your shit. You said what the fuck you said. You said that you would never love another bitch like you love Monique. Ain't no wrong with that, but just keep it 100. You too old to be doing this creep squad shit. You just is. You just too old for that. And then you know Jade starts crying and shit. And then you know he just looks. He sits next to Moniz and he was like, "Moniz, get the fuck out of here." And um, she was like, and "I'm not going anywhere." And I'm like, Moniz, now why did you have to come in and stir the pot like that? Like why did you have to come in? Now, now my question is. Is Monique still going to be on the show or this was like the first and last episode of Love and Hip Hop New York that she would be, um, that she would be, um, appearing on because once Love and Hip Hop Hollywood was up, I'm like, Lord, how am I going to get my Monique's fix? But it looks like I might get it again, but we're going to see about that. But I'm not going to, but even though I love Monique's today, she was wrong for how she came in and just wrecked shop like that. But Rich is just as wrong for allowing the shit to happen and making Jade look stupid as a motherfucker. Later on down the line, Jade has a conversation with Rich by the water. And she pretty much let his motherfucking ass know. I done got attacked by Ashley. Now I get attacked by your ex-girlfriend. And you telling her that you want to see her monkey. And you want to fuck her and all of that stuff. And Rich is really unfazed by the shit that she's saying. He even tells her to shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting up here like, Rich, what type of shit is that? This girl has every motherfucking right to feel the way that she does. Regarding your bullshit ass behavior. Like, you a grown ass man. And you sitting up here claiming a motherfucking squad. The creek squad at that bitch you in your 40s. And you just need to sit the fuck down with that bullshit. Like, this girl is young. She need to be dealing with this shit. She already had to deal with your fast ass daughter. Now she dealing with your crazy ass ex-girlfriend. Like, honestly, I didn't really have a problem with Jade. Period. I didn't really talk about her much um on my last video. But um, I just couldn't deal with the fact that Rich just looked at this girl like she didn't have no right to feel the way that she did. She had every right to feel the way that she did because Rich, you really played it to the left for Monique and you played it to the left and didn't try to do nothing about your damn daughter. Because at the end of the day, Ashley was fucking wrong for that. I get that she was your daughter, but all in all, if my mother, because my mother um is no longer with my stepfather, if she had another man, of course I'm going to want to know who the fuck he is and what the fuck he do and what type of intentions he got with my motherfucking mama, but I'm not going to disrespect this nigga, and that's all out of respect for my damn mama, so you know what I'm saying, Rich ain't got no respect and, um, for these women, and I wish they would stop trying to be with him, because he don't respect they ass at all period so um, I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm going to go down a little bit. 
with Mariah Lynn and Cisco. Now, they had an interesting motherfucking moment, okay? Like, Cisco has been going through a lot of things with his mom, but they finally got a better relationship, but now he finds out that she got an aneurysm on her brain, and he the, the best person to go to is Mariah Lynn. Now, he was talking about working with Mariah Lynn and all of that, and he was talking about um, how... Um, he was talking about how things have been going between the two of them and how he apologizing to her about how he treated her and did her as a result of trying to get back at Ridge and now they both are bonding over the, over similar experiences that they're going through with their parents and I thought that was a little sweet moment. You know, I don't really dig Mariah Lynn. I never have dig Mariah Lynn. I don't like Mariah Lynn and I don't like Cisco the Snowman either but this moment made them a little bit more human in my eyes and I can get with them just a tad bit just learning about their experiences and how they have to deal with the shit that's going on with their parents. Because Mariah Lynn um, mama was pregnant last season, right? She was old as hell and pregnant as hell. I didn't know that she had a brain aneurysm. So this could bring them two together and could intensify their work, um, their working relationship just due to the fact that they understand each other just a little bit more just a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that that's what the case is for Mariah Lynn and Cisco and Snowman. So, let's talk about Cardi B, Mariah Lynn, and Bianca. They all sitting over there by the beach. And they all just talking about their different issues. Cardi B talking about Tommy who was in jail. You know what I'm saying? She tells him about her songs hitting the charts. He don't want to hear about it. He goes on to something else. And like Bianca said, do you really want a woman... That's on her grind, handling her motherfucking business and getting money. Or do you just want a bum bitch? You know what I'm saying? And from the loose of it, Tommy just wants a bum bitch. He wants a bum bitch that's going to be sitting up here, um, you know, chasing after him, trying to have jailhouse weddings and shit. That's what the fuck Tommy wants because he's clearly not interested in Cardi's well-being he's not interested in her music popping he's not interested in her doing bigger and better things with her life he just want her to be a motherfucking housewife and that's not what she wants to be so mariah lynn she talks to them about her situation with self and how she was thinking that she was going to be the first lady of, of gwenin and everything like that but turns around this and there's this singing bitch that turns out to be the first lady of gwenin and he promised her so many things and nothing happened and Cardi B was like but you know what Mariah that's good for you though because at the end of the motherfucking day if if self didn't do shit for me what the hell make you think that he gonna do something for you you know what I mean and then you know self going around saying that he put Cardi on he's the reason for her success and you know Cardi disagrees and I disagree too because self didn't really do much for Cardi B if anybody is responsible for Cardi B's success is fucking Mona Scott Young in so many words like Alexander Rogers say nigga Scott Young you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Alexander Rogers for that shit. But you know what I'm saying? Um, no, ma'am. Um, I don't know what the fuck made you think Self is going to do you some favors. Because he really didn't do shit for Cardi B at all. He didn't even want to listen to a track by Cardi B. So what the hell make you think he going to do something for you? Bitch, please. Now, Bianca. She's telling um Cardi B and Mariah Lynn that, you know, they're working on her fucking apartment. And with them working on the apartment, Drewski got some shit that he got to give her. Basically something music related and she said that she's gonna invite Drewski to her apartment and She's gonna see how it's gonna go now Bianca. I love you to death You one of my faves on here, but I ain't fucking with this shit like you are sitting up here really You sitting up here really like plotting on the fact that this bitch is just sitting up here You plotting on this bitch man, you know what I mean now you're going to, into disrespect for territory Although I do stand by the fact that you don't owe the bitch shit you don't owe her no fucking loyalty because she's not your friend. She's nothing to you. But you are deliberately sitting up here praying on this bitch man. You know she insecure as a motherfucker. Why are you sitting up here praying on this bitch man? Drewski pretty much letting you know that he don't want you like that. He wants Sky ass. And that's who he going to be with. He's not going to be with you, Bianca. And you just need to realize that and understand it and respect that shit too. He ain't going to be with you. He flirting with you. He might want to bang your ass, but he don't want to be with your ass like that. So just let it go. So Mariah Lynn, she goes out to work out with Sky. And they talk about Bianca. Now, this is the part where I don't agree with Mariah Lynn in it. Now, Mariah Lynn has pretty much broke the G-code in so many ways with this situation right here, okay? First of all, Bianca is has been your friend for the longest. You 
just met Scott. So why the fuck is you sitting up here betraying the trust of your friend Bianca for this bitch? Okay, I get it. You're friends with both of these people. I understand it. But at the end of the day, it's just some things you need to stay out of. Like, I get that you want to be a real bitch and you want to keep it 100 and you want to tell somebody what it really is. But at the end of the motherfucking day, you know what I'm saying? That bitch is not your friend like that. Bianca is your fucking friend. And I know that what the fuck Bianca is doing is absolutely wrong. 100% wrong. But it wasn't your place to go to Scott and tell her that. Now, you and Bianca finna fell out because you decided that you wanted to be loyal to this bitch, but you wasn't loyal to her. It would You would have been loyal to the both of them had you shut your fucking mouth. I just don't agree with that. Like, I don't agree with what Bianca's doing, but I don't agree with what you're doing. I've been in positions where I have two friends, and I knew shit about... Let me just take it back. I've been in a situation where I have three friends. Two girls and a guy. Both girls were my friends. The guy was like a brother to me. Both of these girls was fucking with this nigga. And I'm friends with both of these girls. And I'm friends with the nigga. So I was in this fucked up ass predicament. This girl telling me all about her situation with him. This girl telling me all about her situation with him. And I and did. And then this nigga really ain't telling me shit because we ain't seen each other in a while. But I know all his tea. And he don't even know that I know all his tea. But I'm keeping all his tea because I, I got loyalty to him. I got loyalty to this girl. I got loyalty to that girl. It's just some situations where you just don't open up your fucking mouth. And, and just it's just none of your fucking business. And I just felt like Mariah Lynn was foul for that. I just... That's how I feel. Bianca foul for what she doing, but we ain't talking about Bianca right now. We talking about Mariah Lynn and she foul for that. Juicy comes to Bianca's hotel room and Bianca look like a damn fool. Bianca, you a fucking fool. Like you like a whole a whole motherfucking rat bitch. Like you gonna invite this nigga to your hotel and you you just standing up there half ass naked. Really, bitch, you looking desperate and you coming off as a fucking try hard. What's the fucking point, bitch? Why are you doing this? It's not worth it, girl. It's not motherfucking worth it. Why are you doing it? You are like you need to be focusing on your motherfucking music instead of focusing on some fuck shit like this. Why are you doing this? I don't even understand why you're doing it. It's not worth it, girl. It's just not worth it. Period. It ain't worth it. You sitting up here worrying about this shit, but yet you need to be trying to worry about your motherfucking music career. And you wonder why Sky don't fucking like your ass. Now I had your back all these motherfucking episodes, but now you just just disgusted me because you look like a damn idiot doing the shit that you doing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's pretty clear that this man wants to be with Sky. He might want to fuck you, like I said, but he want to be with Sky. He don't want to be with your motherfucking ass. So just stop it, okay? And I get it. Drew has been giving out mixed signals. He be putting his dick on your ass and doing all sorts of shit. So I get where you're coming from, but at the end of the day. Where he gonna go to is that bitch. That's where he gonna stay at. And you just gonna have to get it. You just gonna let that go and get it popping. That's all I gotta say. Um, Bianca has a show. And then the next thing you know, um, Sky pulls up. And when Yanny walks out, they have a confrontation. Now, Sky look like a damn fool too because she walking around New York with bread in her titties and shit like that. Like, what's the fucking point of you walking around this bitch with bread in your titties and shit? Like, you just like you just knew that you were going to tell this bitch that she was a bird, so you decided to take the bread that you had in your damn peanut butter and jelly sandwich and said, I'm going to put this piece of my damn, put the booty bread in your pocket and then bite off of it and throw it at the bitch. Like, really, that was so fucking lame. But I get why you um approached her because she had no business inviting Drewski to the hotel room, but ass nigga. She had no business doing that. That was a whole move and within itself it was. And Bianca, stop saying you don't want Drew, but you blowing his phone up and you invite him to hotels and shit. You writing songs about him. Bitch, you obviously do want him. You just felt stupid because he didn't take the fucking bait. That's all that was. So stop being stupid. You know you wanted this nigga. And because he did not take the bait, you mad. Take that L and keep it moving. Ugh. Yanny goes to Judy and Neff. She talks about the shit that happened at um, a scene's party. And she pretty much told him that it was nothing but an ambush. You know, these girls can't stand me. They don't like me. You know what I'm saying? They did everything they possibly could to make me look bad. That's all they fucking did. So the next thing you know, they talk about the apartment. And you know, she goes around saying, Erica says that her and Mendeecee still got the same, you know, address. And this apartment that Mendeecee allowed her to stay in. I'm going to get the locks changed. Next thing you know, Erica tries to get up in that house. 
try to turn in Keisha at house and realize that yeah, they didn't got the motherfucking locks changed. She didn't she didn't call Samantha telling her how she gonna check her and she comes over to Gandy's office. And um and DC sister there and they are about to get right into the motherfucking tea and she said I did that I did that that's what a wife does I'm like oh yeah be showing her true colors I did she really showing them true colors I didn't I'm here for all of the true colors show me the red black yellow purple pink all of it bitch show me all of it but with that being said y'all that was the end right there the the confrontation is gonna continue on to next week so with that being said y'all like subscribe rate and um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and my Facebook fan page. All of that stuff will be at the bottom. Be sure to be on the lookout for my K. Michelle, my life video. I have not watched Leave It to Stevie. I'm, I don't know. I'm still debating about that. But with that being said, y'all, I am out of here, y'all. Till next time, I'm out. See y'all.